coming to you direct from the nerve center of the galaxy's greatest comic. This is the 2000 AD Thrill Cars. Borag Fan Athletes and welcome to the latest episode of the 2000 AD Thrillcast Lockdown Tapes. I am your host, as always, Malt Char. On this episode, we're actually stepping away from 2000 AD. But it is a, a, a story and an interviewee who is as important to the development of 2000 AD as uh, anybody who worked directly on it. And that's uh, the editor Dave Hunt. Now, Dave was editor on Battle which was created by Pat Mills and John Wagner in response to uh, DC Thompson's Warlord comic. Battle was uh, a very different animal to the kind of war comics that had come before it. A lot more visceral, a lot more violent, a lot more true to um, the uh, stories it was trying to tell in terms of the uh, experience of people who'd actually fought in war. It brought us series such as uh, Major Easy, of course, Charlie's War, Rat Pack. Um, and uh, it was great to be able to talk to Dave about the genesis of battle, his role in it, um, his views on on uh, artists such as Carlos Esquerra and Joel Calhoun, what Pat and John did with battle um, and what they started. Because, of course, um, battle went uh, went first, then you have action, then you have 2000 AD. So it's uh, one of those stories which I think is is key uh, to uh, to the story of 2000 AD. And it was a delight to be able to talk to Dave about his career as an editor, a wonderful, self evasing and uh, humble man who uh, yeah chatted to me for a very long time, for which I'm very grateful. Um, so we're going to crack on in just a second. In the meantime, of course, as always. If you have uh, interviewees or subjects you would like us to cover on the 2080 Thrillcast, then thrillcast at 2080.com is your gateway to the ears of Tharg, uh, or at least, the very least, the ears of Molchar. Um, so, uh, yeah, do drop us a line if there's anything in particular. Thank you to everyone who has uh, given some feedback on the podcast over the weeks of lockdown. We continue, uh, as uh, lockdown does, really. Um, so thank you so much for all the support you've given the podcast and 2000 AD. So let's, uh, let's hear from Dave Hunt all about his role in this kind of critical period of the 1970s. You, uh, you're from the, 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 the East End, I guess, uh, working class background, yeah? Yeah, very much so. Working class background, um, uh, fortunate enough to have passed um, uh, an 11 plus, so went to the local sort of grammar school. Um, not academically the, the brightest boy in the in the in the year, but uh, um, you know by the same token very informative and um, managed to get three three O levels, two of which were the English language and uh, literature subjects, um, and really from from school went straight into the the, uh, the comics industry as it were. And and what was your uh... What was your family's background? It, 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 it was uh, writing, editing, working in in publishing something that that uh, you know ran in the family, or was was this something you decided you just wanted to do? Um, well, on my mother's side, I think there are sort of um, there are journalists, if if you like, no, uh, not so much journalists, but um, got, uh, you know people that could sort of put put a few sentences together and. Uh, uh, were secretaries and what have you and so forth. My father's my father's side was very very working class, and that he worked in the local docks, um, uh, you know, as a, a, a dock worker, obviously. And um, but obviously a lot of common sense uh, from a, from a man of that generation. And um, I could have. It's quite feasible that had I not sort of got into a, an industry I wanted to be in. I could have easily followed him to the docks because it was a father-son um, relationship, as it were, obviously, and one uh, could have gone into that industry. I have a twin brother who quite gladly 
went into that route, as it were, and, and did very well for himself, uh, sort of, um, uh, you know, career-wise and financially-wise. So it, it was always that sort of thing. Uh, that I could have gone one way or t'other, but uh, I suppose with the grammar school, um, you know, background, uh, I wanted to, to try, hopefully, to pursue um, um, a career in writing, uh, be a career with a, uh, j- journalism with a, a very small J, but uh, it was something I wanted to get into, and I, I loved to do at school and and um, and so forth. Mm. What, what did your your parents think about your choice? Uh, well, quite proud of me, really. I mean, obviously, mm. I mean, it was something I wanted to do, and um, they gave me every sort of backing on that. But yeah, I suppose it was easier for me that I, um, I could always always if things didn't quite work out the way I I anticipated or hoped for, that I could have could have gone down another route with my, with my father as it were mm. uh, so I always had, had that a, as a backup but um, yeah, I you know I wanted to get, get into uh, the, the journalistic world and, um, and when the opportunity came I sort of grabbed it with um, every hand as it were mm. I, obviously war is a, a, a subject we're going to come on to talk quite a lot about with uh, with regards to, to, to battle. I wonder, when you were a kid, uh, growing up in the East End, obviously a, a, an area that, that uh, suffered very badly during the Second World War from, from uh, bombing, how much uh, this was something that was present in your, in your everyday, uh, in your consciousness, whether it was something that was, there were always reminders there about what had happened during the 40s? Well, yeah, that, that's that's a good question. On it, in as much that um, I mean, my sort of early days, you know, in the sort of back streets of the East End, as it were, were uh, full of playing on bomb sites. Um, you know, where we had great adventures and would play war and, um, and all manner of things. And uh, uh, but not seeing the significance of what obviously had happened, mm. you know, in the, in the previous ten years, as it were. Uh, however, I always think, like to think my father, although maybe. The written word wasn't his his strong point. He could always um, relate a good story, mm. uh, and yeah, and I, I can always remember him, you know, at family gatherings. Uh, once he um, he got going, and maybe the, the wine started flowing, or the beer as it was then, um, <laughs> he could tell, always tell a, a marvelous story. Um, which every time I heard that same story, always got a little bit more exaggerated. Um, but um, it, 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 he had that in him to sort of entertain people, if you like. Mm-hmm. And and I, I suppose war, his war adventures and mm-hmm. Mum's as well, because Mum also lived, uh, worked and lived in in the East End, and they were sort of working sort of the night shifts at the um, the local factories. Which, um, as you know, obviously the East End was was severely um, uh, hit um, mm. uh, in those early years of the war, as it were. Uh, I mean, even my grand my grandfather actually was killed uh, um, by a, um, a doodle bug uh, later in the year, yeah, which badly injured my grandmother uh, mm. and a grandfather who I never saw because I was born in 1945. But uh, that was the sort of upbringing one had at that time in as much mm. that um, it, I think people then just got on with it. Um, it wasn't too, um, wasn't too serious. I don't know how we'd face it in today's sort of uh, world we live in, but then it was almost matter of fact that this had happened. They'd got through it. And I said, um, Dad, when um, he was relating these stories, could always entertain entertain people. So maybe I got something from him on that on, on that side of things. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll come and talk a, a, a more about war and battle and, and, and everything in, in, in a bit. Um, comics, very different world back then. You obviously had, uh, um, uh, well, Amalgamated Press, IPC, uh, and you had DC Thompson. Um, again, was, was this just part of, for you, growing up? Was it, comics were a thing that, that were, were just there and you enjoyed and that was part of your childhood? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have any sort of um, any any sort of great. Uh, I must get into comics or anything like that. I we I enjoyed them. I, I mean, I can recall you know, doing sort of a, a paper round locally and uh, devouring the comics, uh, mostly the DC titles. I have to say at that time because I used to love the written word. 
and uh, there, there, there were great adventures in those comics. You know, the Rovers, the Hotspurs, um, uh, Victor, uh, and um, really sort of getting a love for uh, that, those those sort of titles that could really excite one's imagination. Um, but I had no real sort of, I mean, whatever. As I recall at that time, when when I left school, I had a good I had a good friend who worked as it was then for Fleetway Publications. Um, but at that time, which was 61 when I joined the company, uh, mm. which eventually became IPC Magazines, the previous it had been Amalgamated Press, but um, then it was Fleetway Publication. And you had, as a young man, I was 16 years of age when I left school, um, you had to join the NetSOPA union first before you could be considered um, to apply for jobs, as it were, within the industry. Uh, and I recall, I mean, I mean, I, I, you had to pass an interview with, with those people at that, at that time. And I can recall that um, my first job I went for was at the Financial Times uh, in the Mansion House in London, uh, which is completely <laughs> the, the other side of the coin, as it were, to um, to comics, you know. Mm. Um, and uh, I, I, I can remember sort of um, uh, really sort of impressing uh, whoever was interviewing me at the, at me at the time but at the next level, because he took me to see his boss, uh, something went wrong during that interview, and I, I didn't get the job. Um, so, you know, it really, I wasn't, I wasn't sort of going down, trying to go down a comics route. I just wanted to get into journalism, uh, whatever the job would be sort of thing, and then take it from there, as it were. But then the next job that came up was at uh, Fleetway Publications, amazingly, and I was interviewed by a, a chap called um, Alf Wallace, who was really in charge at, at Fleetway of all the library titles, mm. um, Thriller, Cowboy li uh, Library, L Lone Rider, Battle, Sex and Blake, War, and so I got that I got that job as the um, um, uh, uh, as the office junior. Really, that was the role that was of advertised. <coughs> Excuse me, and the rest uh, was from there, as it were. Mm. I. I it, it's always fascinating for me as, as a. Yeah, as I've, a got a bit of a uh, I've got a bit of a cold, so sorry, sorry. Don't worry. Don't worry. So if, if I start coughing mid sentence, do excuse me. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, one thing I'm always, as, as a, uh, I was about to say a lifelong, but um, in all my working life, I've been a member of the NUJ. Uh, yeah. The idea of having to join a union in order to get a job is obviously something that's very different, kind of post Thatcher and and, and post the eighties. And with, with something like the, what was it, the National Society of Operative Printers and Assistants, which is a, a yes, hell of a, hell of a right. mouthful. Um, Wasn't it just? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you dis describe the kind of, because uh, we're coming to, to, to your actual duties uh, uh, when you became a kind of like an office junior at Fleetway in a second, but you describe the kind of, the atmosphere at places like this, you know, the, the 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 working world at the time that you came into as a as a pretty young man um, in the uh, in the sixties. Well, it, it, it was just that's what you had to do. Mm. You weren't, as I said, considered um, for any job. You you couldn't write to to um, Fleetway uh, asking if there were any vacancies. They had to go through NatSOPA to see who was available, as it were, and and. They got their sort of um, <coughs> their, um, their, their, their 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 interviewees, as it were, from from that sofa. So mm. you just had to accept it, really. If you didn't get past that that sofa interview, you would not be considered. Right. It's really as simple as that, really. So I can recall it was a small um, building of, uh, just over Blackfriars Bridge in London, where that sofa house was. Um, situated near to the printing works there and um, it really you know that 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 first hurdle if you like was the most difficult I think because you had to impress on that sofa person who was interviewing you because if you didn't think you were up up for them up to the mark uh, you wouldn't have got through that first hurdle but you mm -hmm. had to accept it as it were you know yeah yeah <laughs> excuse me and like at Fleetway, you're in the office junior role. I mean, this this was, I mean, I, I, I suppose a, a a less official phrase would be dog's body, really, wouldn't it? Because you 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 were given all sorts of jobs. Do you want to describe what life was like for for an office junior at Fleetway in 1961? Uh, oh, 
great fun, really. <laughs> sort of smoke, smoke, everyone smoked, as I recall. Um, the, the, the first sort of um, Christmas party was a, was a hoop, you know, it was free booze for everyone, not me. But, you know, guys, I just, I just think they were, um, it was, I don't know, the start of the swinging 60s, uh, I don't know what it was, you know, but uh, everyone seemed to be a character. Which seemed mm. to be at the time that like that, and uh, you just learn from these characters, really. I mean, the the guy I worked with, and um, I started working on on Cowboy Picture Library and Lone Rider Picture Library. That was my my office um, situation and location, as it were. And um, there was a guy in there who was um, an art man, Bill Ward. His name was, as I recall, nice guy, and he he was. Um, he was shacked up with a, a well-known actor on TV. TV, who was playing all the sort of um, the lead sort of uh, macho roles, as it were. And obviously, you know, uh, it wasn't like that at all because the, the two of them were an item, as it were. Uh, and, and and him telling me marvelous stories about, um, you know, what was going on in the sort of TV and film industry, as it were. And you know, it, it was really a, a quite a surreal world, really. Um, um, it always seemed to be well overstaffed. I, I don't know if I'm wrong in thinking that, but there seemed to be sort of people, you know, by by the dozen on these titles. And when it all, it all got sort of a little bit sort of scaled back in the 70s and so forth, um, you know, it, uh, when staffing levels were much tighter, uh, then it seemed to be um, quite sort of extravagant with their staffing levels, as it were, uh, to, to my to my gain, obviously, because. Being an office junior, you could sort of you could walk around, um, hopefully impressing these people, um, um, and making and making sort of a, your mark, as it were, and 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 listening and learning from them. So I, I mean, I I I I I recall that that time in my career uh, with great affection. Because in terms of your your day to day work, I mean, this this was this was. Picking up artwork and changing towels and you know making cups of tea and things like that. It, 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 I mean, that sounds like the perfect environment, as you say, in which to learn from people to see how they do yeah, yeah. on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, very much so. You could you could listen from them, you know, and uh, you know if something would go uh, there was a, there was a question mark. Say, let's say over a title, it was it was a collective. Sort of input from everyone that would change a title on a, on a, on a series, uh, and I can you know, I and mean, then all of a sudden the best one, the best title would win, and then you had all these marvelous freelance guys coming in, uh, you know, and, and and meeting them for the first time. Most of them completely sort of um, extravagant and over the top, but marvelous characters again. You know, you could um, you could really sort of enthuse to really you enjoy their enjoy their company. Um, and, you know, it was a it was a much wider world than the one I'd been used to uh, pre work, as it were. You know, within the score and home fr- framework, mm. the, these these guys were, uh, were much more extravagant and, uh, if you like, um, artistic and uh, and and you know, industrious with their sort of ability, as it were. You know, and it was I, I loved it. It was a great time, and I was learning, as you say, all the time. Mm. Mm. And with uh, with the the library titles, I, the the sheer range of those titles is incredible. Because we, I mean, we've started reprinting um, the the war titles. We're going to be having our first filler picture uh, special later this year. The the sheer yeah. amount of material these things got through was in, was incredible in hindsight. Yeah, you know, yeah, this, yeah. This proper thick um comics being put out on a regular basis on a whole yeah. range of of, uh, of 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 subjects i mean i guess that 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 would have made it quite a, a busy office more than anything yeah it would, it would, I, I, you know it, 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 as i said it embraced all the subjects really i mean war mm. um, western and um, thriller um and i i thought that was great and then, and then there was also the girls i think was, there were girls libraries as well not to the same extent as the boys a boys area but um i mean uh, there's some of those stories i mean lone rider picture library which i was uh um uh, privileged to be a part because i only just started to when i joined in 61 uh, some of those stories were, i thought were first class um you know quite adult western types mm. um 
And um, uh, again, I mean, I can remember sort of meeting guys who I, I would later go on to know quite well, the Tom Tullys and the world and um, Roy Roylance and people like this, you know, uh, and sort of uh, enjoy again their company and see just how they how, how they sort of work this sort of magic. Mm. You you moved on to um, the Tiger team under Derek Burnage. Um, yeah. How did, how did you feel about that at the time? Obviously, you know, it's a it's promotion. It's something new. It's a, a, you're kind of moving on in the world. But I just wanted to get a sense of of you know your mindset at the time and and mm. uh, your sense of where you were going and what you wanted to do. Well, I must have impressed Derek because, I mean, again, it would only have been sort of um, going into his office, maybe doing a sort of station run for him or um, uh, changing his towel, or the, the, you know, his, um, and so forth. So I must have impressed him in, uh, at some time. And all of a sudden, this guy is sort of, um, as I recall, sort of, you know, um, waylaying me in the corridor and saying, you know, we've got a vacancy on, on Tiger. Now, Tiger at the time was was a, a, a fantastic title. You know, he had characters like uh, Roy the Rovers, Jed Ace Logan, Olap the Gladiator. Um, and I, I mean, I, and I, crikey, I, I've made it. You know, I, I'm now going to be a part of um, a, a weekly um, publication, which which was a publication I, I thoroughly enjoyed reading uh, as, a, as, a, as a youngster, as it were. So suddenly I'm now working on it. And... Um, I, I, I consider myself very fortunate to have made that sort of vital first leap, as it were, into the industry. So, uh, and Derek himself was was a, was a, such a, a, a pleasant guy. Um, he, was, he was just a, a gentleman through and through. And um, yeah, you know, again, you, you learn from him. He he wasn't into histrionics. He wasn't into uh, thumping the desk and uh, screaming uh, screaming at contributors or his staff. He, everything was well reasoned with Derek, and um, you know, and then you, when you looked at his history, um, what he'd done for the business, and you know, it, it, it was it was a proud moment for me that all of a sudden I was being considered by this gentleman, gentleman of the profession, as it were. Sub editor is a is a role that, um, as the comics industry has, uh, I mean completely changed over the last uh, 40 or 50 years. It, it, it's a, a, a role that has um, fallen by the wayside. Um, mm. How important was being a sub-editor to how comics were produced at the time? Because it, it, you, know, you, you listen to the testimony of somebody like um, Alan Grant, who, who was a sub-editor um, for 2000 AD, and it seems almost as if they're kind of holding everything together, you know, every, every, all the kind of nitty gritty that needs to be done to get the, the thing out the door is the mm -hmm. sub-editor's task, you know? Well, the sub, sub editor really, I suppose, he, you know, he, uh, he was the workhorse, really, um, because, I mean, even, even in those times, and it maybe the, the, the editor really was the, was, was the kingpin of the, of the system, as it were. But he, he obviously was entertaining. He was... He was creating and so forth, but the, the sub editor, to my mind, was was the, was the everything revolved around him, as it were, because he was responsible for getting that sort of material to the editor. Uh, after the editor made the decisions, obviously so as to what was what he wanted or expected from the, the sub editor. Um, so it was, a, I thought, at the time anyway, it was a, it was a vital role. I mean, I, the, I when I started on Tiger, uh, I wasn't the only sub; I was a junior sub editor, if you like. Uh, there were two guys up the pecking order ahead of me. Um, so, you know, we were a staff suddenly of three sub-editors on, on the publication. Again, for me, it was always about learning um, and seeing how it was done and, and, and uh, you know, um, not only creatively, but sort of uh, from, a, from a sort of um, a personality viewpoint as well. These guys, how they dealt with contributors and uh, how they enthused about their character and so forth. So yeah, sub editor's role was very vital in as much that it revolved around him because he was the, it, he or she was the um, uh, was the, was the, really the person that got it all together, if you like. And Tiger and um, uh, comics like Lion, um, mm. they don't really exist anymore. 
no, no. you know, you, you've got 2000 AD, which is, which is still keeping the anthology uh, alive. But, you know, mm. these, these were uh, strip, short strips with gimmicks, you know, fantastical gimmicks, and, and there'd be some other elements yeah. thrown in. Um, mm. what, what was your uh, memory of the kind of comic that, that, uh, that Tiger was, you know, and, and, and the ethos behind it? Um, well, I suppose it would be considered sort of old hat now, but the, these these were long running stories. I mean, there's something like Roy, obviously, where the Rovers, he, you know, they, they, they started him off as the youngster, um, and he, it was his progression through through the years, as it as it were, and, and kids like him could be could be a Roy, the Rovers, as it were, you know, mm. the kids reading the comic could could be a Roy, but it, as you say, it, it was an all embracing. Um, Title and as much it had science fiction, it had history with Olac, and it had um, football with Roy the Rovers and 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 others. So so it was an all it was all it was all subjects as such, um, and but I, I think it was a much more gentler. Um, yeah, you know, it was almost sort of a, you know episodic, as said, but. Um, uh, you know, it, it didn't rely on the sort of the, the, the sort of big impact type frames that maybe were, were to come later that you mm. had to grab hold of the kids. I think kids then accepted a much slower pace of um, pacing of the stories, as it were, uh, if that makes sense. You know, they yeah. they, they they themselves grew with the characters, um, whereas later when we were doing sort of... Um, Things like battle, you had to have a, a you know a, a punch in every sort of uh, every every episode of every story, as it were. You know, mm. um, I mean, they had the episodic cliffhangers. We know that, and you know, read on next week. It's it's bound to get better, but it, it was much more easier paced than what was to come later. Obviously, you know, and as I said, it was all subjects. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that nicely leads me on to, to talking about Scorcher, which was a, a, a all com a, an all football uh, title, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was yeah. a real rarity at the time, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I mean, it, Scorcher was really the, um, an offspring of, um, of the Shoot magazine um, that, that had started, I think, a year before. Uh, I think it was about 69 Shoot, um, uh, and it had, had, had been a real, a real success for um for the company as it were so they wanted a, a sort of a, a junior football title and um i mean i must have done something right in the in the preceding uh nine ten years because i, I was suddenly put forward as the as the guy who could be the editor on this publication much i have to recall now much to the consummation of or maybe others who thought maybe they should be considered for the role if you see what i mean much yeah. older much more experienced um, but um, I, I was I was obviously delighted that suddenly, if you like, not in sole charge because there was, there was always a managing editor above you, um, and you, you, you'd relate to him. In that case, it was Sid, uh, Sid Bicknell. Um, but by the same token, um, I mean, suddenly to get a, a, a title like Scorcher, and with my love of football, which um, you know is well well documented. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I was I was you know over the moon as they say. <laughs> Uh, with with this sort of um, uh, development in my career, mm -hmm. and in terms of the the guidance that you were given uh, in this, how, how how much planning went into um, what you wanted the the feel of the of the comic to be and the attitude of it? Uh, well, it was obviously um, uh, football to be enjoyed. I mean, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, the, uh, those early days, the, the printing process, unfortunately, wasn't wasn't great. We were we were printing, uh, you know, inferior photographs, if you like, um, on uh, yeah, inferior quality paper, and uh, so we never, I think, got the quality we wanted. And and the, the letterpress sort of um, machines were sort of trying to cope with all this and, and couldn't. But um, the, the actual stories themselves, I, it was all I always thought was always about aspiration. Really, I mean, with the Billy's boots, the boy who couldn't play football uh, until he put the magic boots on. To him, magic anyway. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it was all a bit sort of um, less. Uh, what's the word? Less. Uh, 
aggro. But, you know, the stories were quite tame by comparison, again, for what was to come for me later, as it were, you know. But, uh, I mean, I always thought um, we, we, had a, we had a good, we had a good follow, following with a sculpture. It did the job. I mean, it went for about five years, I think. Um, and uh, we, we developed some good stories. I mean, I, th- I always thought um, also that um, Scorcher had, 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 had a good sort of humour element within it. I mean, the stories like um, Lags 11, stories like Hot Shot Hamish, were always with a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but with marvellous uh, humour in there. And I mean, something like Hot Shot Hamish, this, you know, the big big lad from the, the Scottish Isles, sort of, you know, with, a, with the incredible shot with a... You know, a pet sheep as, a, as, his, as his best friend, as it were, and it, it was it was all a bit mad and zany at times. But at the same time, you could you could smile and, and thoroughly enjoy the stories. And there again, that was a story that really sort of um, stood the test of time later. Mm. So yeah, yeah, it was all a bit a little bit more um, genteel with humour on a subject which I I loved obviously. So I was I was quite delighted with that. Because mm. I mean, I you, had like Ken, you had Ken, Ken Reed working on it at one point, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> dear Ken. <laughs> yeah, great, great. I mean, the conversations one would have with Ken on the phone were almost as mad as the uh, the, the, the stuff he did. This brilliance he he put onto the sort of uh, finished page at the end of it, as it were, just completely <laughs> nah, zany, mad. Uh, you put the phone down, and you, you, you'd have to wipe your the, the tears away, as it were. Because he'd have you sort of um, in stitches, you know. He's just a, yeah. a marvellous character. And he, uh, you know, a guy who had no time for football whatsoever and yet <laughs> could could just come up with these brilliant sort of, um, you know, uh, observations on, 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 on characters. And, you know, marvellous. I, I don't know if you ever met him or knew him or... Unfortunately not, but no. He, he, was, he was a revelation to sort of um, be, be in his company and... Not that I met him very often. I think I only met him the once. Uh, but you know, on the phone and, and and talking over things with him was was a complete and utter joy, really, because he was such a larger than life character himself, as it were. You know, mm-hmm. um, well, he must have been like full time. I just don't know because he he was as I said oh completely over the top, but just marvellous to be with, as it were. You know, mm-hmm. um, I, I, when it came back to, going back to school, I think before that tiger. Um, I think one of my biggest breaks in the, in the industry really was that um, I had on Tiger, I had a guy called Barry Thomas, and I think you've interviewed Barry many times or yeah. spoken with that, you know, Barry quite well. Uh, Barry was, um, I was maybe Barry's assistant, and Dave Gregory was the editor at the time uh, who went on to do Shoot magazine afterwards. But um, um, Barry um, uh, had suddenly had a, a quite a bad injury or you know, the old back um, problems. Um, um, hit him in the late 60s. And I had to sort of, if you like, take the senior sub-editor's role on. Mm. And I, I always think personally, when I, when I reflect that, um, and Barry's misfortune, if you like, being um, being so badly um, injured, as it were, and not very well at all, was my good fortune, in as much that I proved to Dave Gregory and his, his, uh, his, his bosses that... Um, I could do the role if you like, you know. Um, I just kept you kept it running because Dave wasn't. Um, he, he loved. He did love his long lunches, and um, by the time he'd get back, sort of, like, you know, I'd 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 finished the t- I'd finished the pages for that week, and uh, you know, with very often with little, very few changes for him to make, as it were, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think the, the my sort of kudos went up a little bit because of that for that. Because of someone else's misfortune, if you like, um, and I took full advantage of it. So I think I got the school to roll because of of that. You know, um, I, I, when I think back, you know. Hmm. Hmm. Scorcher lasted for for five years before. Yeah. Um, I think it, it, uh, I mean, some of the ships were folded <laughs> back into back into Tiger. I mean, how, how did you feel about that at the time? Uh, well, it was always sad to lose a paper, obviously. But we'd we'd um, en route, we had we had also gobbled up uh, a title called Score and Raw. Um, so unfortunately, this was the uh, this was the new sort of um, age of of mergers, as it were. Mm. Uh, and mergers were uh, obviously sad for 
one 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 set of contributors and 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 the staff who produced that title, but were very sort of advantageous for um, you know um, the, the people that sort of inherited that, that title, as it were, or took that title in. So mm. we 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 benefited from that mid mid route on Scorcher, and now Tiger was recipient to Scorcher, and and that took some very good stories with it. it Namely, Hotshot Hamish, Billy's Boots, and I think Lags Eleven. So that that did that title of the world of God when it was most probably necessary, you know, uh, for the uh, circulation to be sort of uplifted, as it were. <coughs> so yeah, it was always it was always um, you know a sad time for publications, um, you know, suddenly being um, taken off the shelves, as it were. But uh, the host uh, title gained from it. Mm. The, in terms of what you gained from this process, obviously there's, uh, as you said, you know, you, you, you'd shown uh, the bosses that you were able to keep things running, uh, even without uh, a full complement of, of, uh, of staff there. But um, was this a case of, of, of you picking up confidence that you could, could do that as well? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Obviously, uh, one doesn't realise it at the time, but... Um, Again, you're learning. You're learning how to put a paper together. You're learning how to deal with contributors all of the time. There are lots of different characters out there. Um, some need, needing their sort of ego to be nursed. Others needing to be bashed every now and then. You know, we're all different. And um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you, you, you know, you, you, you were learning your trade, as it were. And um, uh, yeah, I, uh, I often think back to that time in the late '60s that. Um, Perhaps it was the me. I was coming of ages, if if you like, as well. That I could suddenly got the confidence that I could do it. You know, I mean, it's always a, it's an industry that you you're, you're only as good as your last issue. I know it sounds trite to say that and cliche, but um, it is really. I mean, you have to be on top of it all the time, and hopefully, trying to dreaming up new ideas that will keep the circulations up. As you know, I mean, you, you're in the business. You know what it's like, mm. and. Um, uh, so you, you you know you're a, you, you're aware all the time that you mustn't fail. You must this must be the best story you've ever done. You know you, this one you're working on with another contributor has to be mm. good because its circulations are slipping. I mean it was I mean circulations obviously were the bane of our lives, weren't they? Treadmill, isn't it? You, you all of the time you're always up against the circulation decline, as it were. You know you're mm. you're fighting a losing battle, and it, often it was the case. I'm afraid. Um, so at that time we we were um, yeah you know we we were, we were losing other titles obviously I think I'm not sure how long Lion went for uh, that time I mean Eagle the new, uh, the Eagle that was then finished during that time uh, after its you know um, marvelous 50s run as it were I mean in the mid 60s to late 60s the Eagle finished as it were you know so um, yeah again you're always on that on that tightrope with um, circulation figures. Mm. Well, you, you, that kind of brings us nicely to talking about uh, John Sanders because I mean, this, this as editorial director, he was the man who wielded the axe on Eagle, um, yeah. and was also a big proponent, I believe, of of the whole hatch match dispatch uh, way of uh, of, of uh, uh, bolstering um, falling circulation by merging different titles. Um, yeah, yeah. But he he was the one who came to you uh, 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 with the offer to work on Battle Picture Weekly, wasn't he? That's right. Yes, he was. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'd always got on reasonably well with John. I mean, he was a he was a, a, a you know a, a, the new guy, as it were, and um, I think the industry needed a real shake up um, when John joined it, as it were. I think we, uh, it most probably had got very complacent. Uh, mm. The readership will always be there, but it wasn't. You know, it, it, uh, falling circulations, as I said, were were sort of always a, a problem. Uh, and 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 John, by his very nature, would be the guy um, to to change things. He's just a. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if you know John, but he, he was always uh, an exciting guy to work with. You know. Um, mm. um, yeah, I like John. We, we got on, but you know what I mean. He um, he seemed to like me as well. And um, so when Battle came along, 
I, I, as, as I've said, I've gone on record before, I knew nothing of um, uh, uh, Messrs. Um, Wagner and Mills. I just didn't know them. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know they were sort of entrenched in the girls' area, unbeknownst to people like Jack the Grand, who was running the boys' area. Um, so, again, uh, being a non-political person, it was all a bit of a shock to me when John called me into the office one one morning and said, look, I want you to work with these two guys. Um, you know, keep it under your hat, don't say too much, just but, but work away. Um, and I remember, remember him saying, obviously, you can learn from them, from the creative side of things, because they are very creative people. And they can learn from you maybe on the editorial side of things. Because mm -hmm. you've, you've, you've run your own title now for five, six years, as it were, you know. So it was it was a it was a, a bit of a um a jolt for me, obviously. Um but one again I look back with great affection because um so it's just suddenly seeing um uh, you know, John and um, Pat in um in operation was completely um completely different to how it had been before. Mm. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it was it was the thing that I wanted to ask about is, is whether this was a a bit of a culture shock. You know, having come from, as you say, a, a relatively comfortable um, situation on on things like Tiger, to when you were asked to work with with Pat and John, uh, mm. they already had a bit of a reputation as firebrands. You know, they've been brought in to to shake things up a little bit to the point where they're, they're having to be hidden in a in a completely different department in order to yeah. uh, to do their work how much of this was a was a culture shock uh between the way that that you were used to doing things and the way that they wanted to do things um well personally i'm a very sort of non-political person and to me you know it doesn't doesn't matter who comes in does what and so forth but you have to you have to you have to comprehend that um john and Pat, you know, um, being tucked away somewhere where they shouldn't have been really, um, ruffled quite a few feathers within within the sort of group, as it were. Um, and, um, I mean, I only sort of really got wind of this later when I suddenly realised what was happening, if you like. it At the time when it started over, there's just two new guys coming in, uh, let's work with them. Let's enjoy it. Let's get on with it. Let's let's produce something good, you know, together. But obviously, there was a lot of um, uh, behind the scenes sort of um, wrangling going on, which I wasn't privy to, and I didn't want to be privy to. Uh, my 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 sort of uh, um, view on it all was that you know, if, if JS wants me to work with these guys, who I found you know um, extremely sort of um, talented, creative right from the onset then I, then i was i was up for it obviously so i just wanted to keep away from that but you have to realize in the background that there, there, there were guys there who worked there for many many years and they were suddenly being if you like pushed to one side and it what didn't go down too well obviously mm. and so that was my viewpoint on it anyway and uh but i didn't want to get involved in that you know because they, they, they were already quite well advanced with the with the launch issue by the time that, that you were yeah on. yeah i mean when i when i got there it was about i would say it was 60 to 70 percent complete hmm. and and in that case you know what were you bringing to the table what what what, what did john sanders think you, you were able to to teach these two well i i i honestly think that they they never John and Pat were never going to be long term on any one subject. I think they were there uh, originally to sort of develop new titles. So uh, it was my thinking at the time that once they got battle up and running and they, they got it into a sort of uh, you know a mindset with it said the ed editor in charge, as it were, he was on board and they knew where it was going to. They would they would get, they would move to one side and develop other other projects. Um, and that was always my thinking on it, obviously, that um, this wasn't going to be sort of them forever and ever, uh, me working with those two. We, we would eventually, m you know, m move away from each one another and to give them time and the opportunity to develop, to develop further things, which Pat especially did, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, was, that was the way I looked at it, as it were, you know. Uh, <laughs> Can you describe them at the time? Because uh, look, looking at them now, you, you couldn't sort of 
have two more different personalities. You know, John's very <laughs> laconic, Pat's very animated. Um, yeah, yeah, what yeah, were they like yeah. at the time? Um, yeah, you, you, you summed them up, really, completely like that. I mean, um, uh, I'm not saying it all went sort of hunky-dory with them. I mean, I'm, I'd have my sort of moments with them, and they'd have their moments with me, obviously. Um, but in the main, we, we got on quite well. My, my, my major problem, I think, was like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> being a married man at that time with young children, um, I was expected, if you like, to sort of burn the midnight oil, uh, you know, uh, for forever and ever, as it were. And uh, mm. that wasn't going down too well at home, as you can imagine. Um, uh, not in a sort of nasty way, but, uh, you know, I had to tread carefully. Uh, in my own personal life as well, style because it, it was difficult because of, you know we we'd go out for lunch the three of us and we'd discuss ideas we'd we'd work up things and then I'd still be there at sort of nine ten o'clock at night sometimes with them because that's the way they worked if you see what I mean quite late starts but uh, very late finishes as it were you know um, so it was difficult in that respect uh, my, my my underlying thoughts with them all the time and I'm not trying to be uh, um, you know, uh, ingratiating or, or what about that they were talented, you know, and it was, yeah. it was, it was quite sort of, um, uh, you know, exciting to be on board as it were with them, you know, um, um, because they were doing things which were, were different. And, uh, uh, I mean, you know, every, every, every story was sort of rewritten 20 times before it finally sort of, uh, got the green light with them, that sort of thing, you know, uh, uh, and, and so it, 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 it was it was frustrating on a time scale thing uh, way of thinking, but it was also very exciting to see a, the, the finished product, which um, I think um, you know proved to be the case with with, with the uh, with the launch issues, as it were. Mm. Um, what? I, I, I think I got more. Um, no, 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 could be careful. I said not not careful, but um, John was more my style of person. Um, yeah. John was, um, you know, let's let's go down and have a pint and talk it over, sort of thing. Well, we might have a game of ball at the same time, you know. But Pat never really got into that side of things. Um, he he just seemed to be sort of twenty four seven on 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 any subject, as it were, you know. So I never got to know Pat quite as well as I knew as I knew John. Uh, yeah. And um, but uh, you know, you, you, they were different, and I think they complemented one another. Uh, again, to use a cliche, but they did. You know, they uh, they were like a breath of fresh air, really, within the within the industry. Suddenly, Battle was very much this kind of uh, turning point for British comics. You know, and it, it's always something you can see in hindsight because you know you, you, you've got Battle, you've got Action, 2000 AD, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. Um, how aware were you at the time that that this was this was going to be something different to what had come before? Well, uh, I mean, right from the onset, uh, we, we we lost the cliff cliffhanger endings, as it were. Um, it, it, as I recall, from 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 they wanted to do four or five page complete stories every time. Mm. Um, so that was different. Um, you know, you, you didn't have to sort of rely on next week to sort of see where we were going with the next episode, as it were. You know, with the next uh, part of the adventure. So that was that was completely different. Um, I, I was always mindful that maybe they might be uh, treading, o going over the top slightly with the with the sort of violence and um, uh, angle. I mean, it was it was always a always a problem that you know we uh, we were we were still trying to sort of um, appeal to you know nine, ten, eleven, twelve year old kids, boys, um, and I you know some of the some of the stuff really was. Um, was 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 quite sort of a heavy I thought you know and uh, but I always my always tempered it all with the fact that if it was a good story and and it had a moral twist and it had a you know it, it was done done well it was done intelligently then then it would it could really sort of um, it could uh, it could survive you know with any criticism that was levelled at it as it were I mean there were there were times when uh, they they. They were seeing you guys. I can remember Peter Lewis, who was in charge of all the um, the gifts and so forth. And I, I don't know if you do remember, but the first issue of Battle had a um, had a, um, a set of uh, war badges 
as a free insert, as it were. Mm. Uh, that was the front cover, you know. And, and um, I think the boys wanted that one time, you know, to put the, sw- the swastika in there. And kids love to, you know, they want to see that sort of thing. And I can remember Peter Lewis really getting quite angry with them. You know, that, uh, you know, I fought in a war, not not to sort of uh, praise these sort of, uh, these people who, who wore that emblem, as it were, you know. The mm. guys were all a bit tongue in cheek and they, they they liked to see if they could push it as far as they could push it, if you see what I mean. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was, you know, and they, there was never any sort of um, conflict with him, with Peter. They, they just thought they had to smile ruefully and that was it. But, uh, but I, I recall that, you know, this guy suddenly took great exception, obviously, to this, 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 this something they wanted, as it were. But in the main, mm. it, it was, um, it, it, uh, John Sanders, I think, had, um, and uh, had, had, uh, all these sort of, if you like, the Surrey people, the guys who did the promotion, circulation, you know, the, the team, as it were, were all on board with the idea. It was just maybe the, it was his, the rivals, if you like, the guys, you know, like Jack the Grand, not being rude to Jack because he, he did a lot of good things for the company, Sid Bicknell. They were the guys who really were sort of um, quite upset by this this departure. It wasn't done the way it was being, you know, that's not the way you launch new titles. But it was yeah. done because obviously it was time to launch a title like Battle because otherwise the the, the industry would have uh, it would have died completely at that time, you know. Mm-hmm. The the brief for Battle um, seems to be uh, to have a, a much more honest approach to war. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, to, uh, to conflict. Do, do you think that that that's to a degree a uh, uh, a generational difference in the, in the you had got people in the office who had literally fought in the second world war and then you've got mm. a new generation of people coming in who don't necessarily have as we discussed a direct uh experience of that no exactly i've got an inkling of what's really what it's about are they you know uh, no, exactly no. I, 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 it, but, do, but at the same time do you think that allows people like pat and uh john and yourself to be uh, Again, to use that word, more honest about what happened. Uh, that there aren't any necessarily sacred cows that uh, that, that, mm. that you're not gonna, mm. that you're not going to touch, kind of thing. Yeah, I suppose. So. I, I mean, I I I thoroughly enjoy, it, but I, you know, I'm, I'm talking from an adult's perspective, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I was all, always mindful of, of the kid. Uh, the, the strange thing is now because. Um, we do have an awful lot of um, um, people who read the comic at that time still have a great affection for the title. Mm. Uh, and when I read some of their comments that, they, you know, they couldn't wait for the next issue and uh, they were in Trent, or they loved Johnny Red, they did this for, with, with uh, whatever, whichever story, the D-Day was the greatest. Um, I, 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 we, we, we were really sort of, uh, I didn't know it for myself really at the time, but we were breaking... Um, we were breaking new ground out there because it was very realistic. Um, um, we thought so anyway. And um, so that that was exciting again, really, that, um, you know, we, we didn't want to do it in a sort of Captain Hurricane-ish type of way, uh, you know, where it was all sort of, um, um, you know, until he flew into a rage, he couldn't sort the problem out sort of thing, or Biggles where, you know, you never really saw a drop of blood in any of the, uh, in any of the frames and so forth. Um, this had to be a more modern approach and a more sort of a visually realistic approach, uh, which, uh, uh, mindful of excessive violence, I think we just about got it right. You know, I really do. Mm. And uh, as you say, quite rightly, it, well, the, the kids of, of that generation, my generation, I mean, I was born in 1945, um, just after the war finished. So I had no inkling uh, really what it was about. I mean, I I, I experienced, I appreciate it from the point of view of the bomb sites which I, when I played and so forth, and maybe the austerity that we had to experience in the late 40s, um, you know, and the rationing and all that sort of thing. But I had no real concept of what it must have been like to sort of be huddling in a in an air raid shelter, you know what I mean, in the back garden, as it were, um, fearing that the next sort of uh, whistle, you know, of a bomb dropping might be your 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 one, as it were, you know. So it, it was it was different for me, but real people had gone through it, and as you say, they were the people in charge at the time were were were, were mindful of this fact that we mustn't go too heavy with it, as it were, maybe you know, 
had a, had a realization about it, you know, as well. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? I think. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, with, with a with a um, was that a flashpoint uh, in in those early days on 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 battles? Uh, were there any points where you looked at something that uh, was planned and you think actually that's probably a bit too far? You know, we need to explain oh, yeah. that in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, very often. Yeah, I, I'd question mark it, and um, we, we'd we'd change the dialogue to fit. You know, maybe take certain things out, but it wasn't heavily um, censored. I do assure you, mm. predominantly what we had, we we kept with, as it were. But there was a great there was a great backlash after um, action, of of course. I mean, that was really, if you like, sort of um, uh, taken off the shelves because of the maybe. Uh, the the realism of violence that was going on at the time on a football store of all things, uh, mm. uh, but you know uh, I didn't want that to happen to battle, uh, and so I was always mindful that we must must get this right. You know, I mean yeah. I do recall. Um, I mean I, I don't know if you've read this before, but what I've said before, but John John John's um, Darkest Mob, which I thoroughly thought was a great sort of. Um, uh, series of stories I really did. I, I mean, him and Mike Weston working together was a was a wonderful revelation. But uh, you know, uh, I, I had a parent writing him one 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 afternoon to me um, and saying that her son was really upset by something we'd p- portrayed in in the scene. I, I think it came from an MP actually, um, mm. and I'm, I'm myself writing back to this MP and saying, look, I do apologise to Mrs. Whoever, um, but we we are just trying to reflect. Uh, it wasn't gratuitous. It was a real life scenario, really. Um, and uh, we, if we've gone, I, I wasn't apologising. I didn't apologise, but I said, you know, we've got to. This is the reality of a wartime situation, as it were. And um, they accepted it. You know, we didn't. We, we didn't get too heavy, um, sort of um, uh, censored because of it. You know, well, we didn't get censored. Mm-hmm. But by the same token, all the time, the treadmill, the, the the tightrope was there. You could have gone one mile taller, and I didn't want battle ending up like um, action, uh, taking off the shelves and then coming back really watered down, um, and um, you know, and uh, not not as shallow as it, as it had been, which I, as you say, I think was quite groundbreaking um, in the years I worked on it, especially. Mm. You were you were finally given sort of full control in in April. 1975. Um, during that period, when when you were kind of nominally the editor, but obviously you're working closer with 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 John and Pat, were you developing your own idea of what you wanted Battle to be once you know they did move on? Oh yeah, I mean it, it, it would have been it would have been sacrilege, real awful for, if I just suddenly said, oh, "Let's get back to the old ways." <laughs> I mean, they, they, they'd, they'd made the template, as it were, what we what was expected of this title, and I was so I had a good ally in sort of someone like Steve McManus, who was my assistant at the time, and together I felt we we kept it true to its original as much as we could in the in the next few years, as it were, you know, and uh, and, and, and and it proved to be very successful the publication, but no, I, I wasn't. Glad to see the back of them. Now let's get back to the sort of um, reality and normality. We'll do it as it was all done before. Uh, they, they'd, they'd set the standard, and, I, and I, I was always desperate to keep keep that standard up, as it were, and make sure that these stories were groundbreaking and did have a moralistic sort of you know twist and so forth. And uh, they, they were good adventures, as it were, you know. And yeah. no, no, that was very that that, that was my. I, I, that was incumbent on me to do that. I felt um, you, you can't start something and then just change it immediately. There, I was I was relieved to see the pack, uh, pack, pack of them go. I must admit, because mm. such as their sort of um, uh, their, they, they 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 subbed everything. They they changed everything. They uh, and we were we were so late production wise, you know, in the end that we were really getting into terrible trouble with the printer. Almost missed an issue, so in one way it was a relief that they departed. Uh, but another way was that I didn't want them departing, thinking that I wouldn't carry on the good work they'd done. I mean, that was important to me, um, Michael. You know, mm-hmm. does that but make sense? I, Sorry. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. It, it and the one of the things that I think really stands out for me with Battle 
is the, the notion of what it is to be a hero or at least a hero of a strip, you know, a lead character, because um, uh, Hellman of Hammer Force, which is, is, is one of those strips that, um, you know, is, is taking a character on the opposite side to, you know, the readers. The readers are, are, are British readers or, you know, the, the very mm. most Commonwealth readers. Mm. And you're presenting a strip, which is, for want of a better word, the baddie took my lead there from from action i think uh, and i i thought helm was a great story and it was seen a viewpoint seen from the rival side as it were the other side you know and and uh, my only premise on that would have been that as, as as pat did it in action that you know moralistically he was a, he was a he had the right idea didn't he i mean he was fighting for his country but with a sort of moralistic sort of um slant on things which which is so important obviously i think we we kicked off with um, a, a german story as a result of helmet called panzer g-man as i remember mm. um which was done by jerry finley day at the time again i'm hoping i'm, I'm right with that uh, um, that memory but um we we did it that way but helmet led the way as it were uh, and i uh, again I, I just felt it was so right that we should see it from the other side as it were i, I weren't was never averse to doing something like that, but Pat was the, was again the groundbreaker on that. But uh, he introduced Hellman in action first, so mm. you know again we, I thank him for that because they proved to be very popular those stories. Yeah. Um, the reader, um, you know, it must have been quite. I don't mean to be um, patronising to the reader, but uh, quite sort of um, you know intelligent, quite seeing it from the other side. I think that intrigued the reader as well. Uh, and that was always important because, you know, again, like circulation, we had a popularity poll, whoever topped it, we kept going those stories, whoever's at the bottom, well, we'll give it some thought, maybe we should change those stories, you know. Um, mm. So it, it was all done sort of very sort of methodically that way. But the, the fact that we suddenly went from the other side, seeing it from, the, uh, you know, the enemy's perspective, as it were, but making sure that that... Um, that 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 arrival was morally as uh, as correct as he could be within a war a war scenario, then that was that was um, that was important. That battle went down that route as well. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned a name there, which I I, I think is important to to focus on for a moment, which is Jerry Finley Day, uh, yeah. who is a, a a writer who is a, a mainstay throughout. Uh, this period, you know, it, all the, the, the key titles in the late 70s and into the 80s, Jerry is right there producing quality. Um, mm. what, what was he like to work with uh, as, as, a, as a writer? Well, uh, I think um, John and Pat lent heavily on Jerry initially because, um, you know, he, he came from the sort of the, um, the girls area where there was a much more sort of, uh, if you like, a, a, a more complex plotting uh, with, you know, emotions in there in some way. It wasn't the Biff Bang Wallop uh, of boys' t uh, stories, as it were. Um, and so they lent heavily on that and could do their own stuff, obviously. But Jerry was, um, uh, you know, just a, just a very pleasant guy again. Here we go again. Everyone seems to be so nice and pleasant. But uh, got on well with Jerry. You know, he, he was always he was a great ideas man. Um, if you gave him an idea, he could develop it. Um, <clears throat> he produced one of the messiest scripts I've ever seen in, in its entirety. Um, he wasn't the, the most sort of um, uh, presentation-wise the, the best sort of presenter of a script. But when you looked at his dialogue and when you looked at the, what he wanted from a scene, uh, it was always, you know, right up there. You need it. You think that's it. He's got it. And, and Jerry was like that, you know, and... Uh, if that didn't work, that idea, he could soon come up with another, you know, he, he, mm. and just a damn nice bloke to work with, really. And um, again, yeah, you surround yourself with these guys that are very talented, aren't we, aren't we lucky? You know, I mean, because, um, you know, I'm always very sort of aware that it's, uh, it's the people you have around you that sort of create things and maybe you might lead them in the right direction. Mm. You might, you know, curtail them a little bit in another direction. At the same time, it's their genius. Is that that's what you're you're, you're striving for all the time? Mm. Oh, nice it, 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 
Yeah, it's, it's something that, that, that Pat has said before. I, I think Dave Gibbons as well, that, that Jerry is such a great ideas man. You know, oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he just yeah. seems to nail that every single strip he does. It's, the, yeah, the central yeah, idea right is so strong. Yeah, you, yeah you, you get into an office meeting with him, you know, ideas session, as it were, and you could see the brain almost sort of whirling away, you know. He just... Boom, boom, boom. It's like a machine gun, these ideas. He he could come up with them all the time, you know. And yeah, and yeah, and was always, um, if you like, uh, you know, pleasing for him when he saw other ideas work as well. He, 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 he liked something like Major Easy working, because that was obviously, you know, and uh, things that Alan Hebden was doing at the time. Um, you know, so uh, you know, he was just, just an ordinary guy. Uh, who had lots of ideas, and uh, I, I, I thought his dialogue was always so sharp as well. It really, you know, without being excessive, he could just get to the point with a, a word, as it were, and, and that was Jerry. Did you have any problems with it? his um, his typing was was legendary at two thousand? Yeah, I said uh, presentation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah he, 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 you know, it was. He, yeah. You remember, you got to remember. Sometimes we were sending these scripts out to um, foreign artists. I, I mean, it's all very well and good sending it out to an English artist who can see through sentence verbiage, the sentence, and you can see what the what the script writer's meaning. But when you've got maybe sometimes a guy who speaks very little English, perhaps doesn't even speak English, and gets an interpretation of it, you know, a translation of it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Then it, we really had to go through Jerry's scene descriptions when it went to a foreign artist with a with a, with a proverbial fine tooth comb because um, it it really was you know don't put that in because the guy this guy just won't understand that what you're saying there Jerry so you you try to simplify a lot of Jerry's sort of um, uh, verbiage within his scenes as it were especially for the foreign uh, foreign uh, uh, artists but uh, yeah that wasn't that wasn't a chore if if the the end result was a uh, was um, good, then who cares? That's, that's just part of your work, isn't it? You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, it, it, again, this, this brings us very nicely on to talking about Carlos, Carlos Esquerra, who mm, was mm. somebody who'd been working for, for DC Thompson. I mean, mm. Pat and John knew Carlos from DC Thompson days. Right, um, right. You know, he's, he's worked there and, and, and wanted this guy on board, as it were. You know what I mean? Because... Yeah. Of, of their previous experience with him, I knew him, liked him obviously, but could we get him? You know, and um, yeah, and he he was a uh, he was in the uh, Bard Nart um, um, stable as I recall at the time, mm. and um, we got him on the first rat pack, and you know, again here we go, aren't we lucky? Um, you know, first episode comes in, and he's, he's nailed it, he, mm. he's got it right, you know, and um, and it went on. With, Personally, I mean, Carlos, uh, myself, um, j just just a joy to work with. You know, just a, mm. uh, again, you know, a special person with so much talent, but very, very um, strong in his feeling of, of what he wanted, how yeah. he should portray, be portrayed, and so forth. You know, uh, he wouldn't take um, direction if he didn't think it was the right direction. You know, he <laughs> he saw he saw images and things. Uh, but he was um, uh, very special again, uh, just a lovely guy. And yeah. uh, again, well, weren't we lucky? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I was going to ask if, if if that if that was a euphemism for for kind of disagreements over, you know, oh Carlos, can you redraw this? And he'd come back and just go, no, 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 I'm not going to touch that kind of thing. Uh, more, more the I wonder, I don't I don't think we ever really asked him. I think if, there was a time when he did something for us on a cover, and that had to be rejected because. It was so visually graphic that it was maybe over the top, you know, as a cover. Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? But a guy lunging at a, a hero, you yeah, bayonet fixed and so forth. That 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 sort of thing. So we we didn't we didn't change it because it was such a marvelous image. But by mm. the same token, we didn't we didn't run it, uh, yeah. and he understood that. You know what I mean? But maybe he'd gone overboard. I, I think I'm sure we paid him because it was such a marvelous piece of artwork. You know, we didn't reject it outright but i think mm. we were reading at the time from action um, um flack as it were so we had to be careful but that that again said you know um uh, it was more the initial interpretation with carlos yeah. he had to get that right once we were all agreed 
Oh, that was that was the character that fitted that 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 that, that you know that sort of scene description and so forth. And Carlos was up and running. You know, you didn't have to touch anything more than that. But it's, so it was originally, it was more the start of a, a story there where Carlos had very very fixed ideas on what he wanted from this story, as it were. You know, and in the, nine times out of ten, or nine times out of hundred, he was hundred percent right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, mm. When I when I when I think of battle, Carlos, you know, the, the, not to diminish in any way, shape, or form anyone uh, any other artist's contribution to, to 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 battle, but Carlos, particularly in those early issues, is is the artist that I think of as as embodying uh, battle. battle, just because it was just it was just so there was this grittiness about it, you know? Yeah, 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 got it right, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. and it suited his style as well, didn't it? You know, and mm. um, I mean, I I, I was so keen to keep him on board as it were I, I just i had to keep this guy interested in battle so we were sort of um if you like dreaming up stories that we knew carlos would be interested in i mean mm. um major easy the laconic guy again you know uh el mestizo we were dreaming those stories up uh, we, we were sort of creating those stories initially just to prevent him going elsewhere because he was yeah. in such such demand, you can imagine with Pat. I mean, he I'm sure he could have um, he could have throttled me a few times, you know, because he, he enjoyed working on battle. That mm. that was the point, uh, Michael. You know, he he liked the title. We, I think he'd broke broken into you know our sort of uh, area through battle, and he was loyal to battle. Mm. He really was. He he didn't want to go. Well, I think we got we got on with him. I like to think so anyway. I always enjoyed his company when we met him. It was very infrequent, but when he came over, we always met up and we had a, had a good chat. And he was a, a nice sort of um, pleasant man who, you know, fixed ideas, but he wouldn't, um, he was always a nice pleasant man to be with, you know. Uh, yeah. And But I was sort of desperate to keep him because, I mean, this title was now, you know, at Steve and myself, we, we, we were trying to keep this sort of thing relevant and, true to what John and Pat had wanted in the first instance. And and Pat and as you say, really, um Carlos was a very much a, a part of that, wasn't he? He was yeah. that grittiness, that you know, reality of what war and battle was all about, as it were. Cause uh, when uh when he developed um Judge Dredd for two thousand A D, uh there was that um moment that he walked away from that because the first episode was uh, uh, was drawn by or well, first published episode was drawn by Mick McMahon with some That's of right. Carlos's art uh, kind of uh, slapped onto the onto the first page. Um, but I mean that that was to your benefit, wasn't it? Because uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you ended up with him on battle, and of course El, El Mestizo that he did with uh, with Alan Hebden. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, I mean I, I I was unaware of just what was going on in the background with, with 2008. I mean, Pat it was, was a great, he's a great guy for, um, he bends everyone's ear. You know, Pat would come into our office, Steve and myself, and I can remember him perched on top of a filing cabinet almost talking to us, you know, that nervous energy of his dreaming up, you know, creating 2000 in his mind as we spoke with him. But he was, he'd put an idea into your head and you'd take it some way and Steve would take it another and he'd, he'd gleaned something from that. You know, that that's mm. the way Pat worked. He liked to, you know, discuss and evolve uh, his stories and his ideas and so forth. Um, you know, very painstaking and a, you know, incredible guy to to, to have on board, as it were. But um, uh, Carlos, I didn't realise. Uh, all I can remember at the time was, let's do something for him that keeps him. But I never knew the real other side of it. I knew he'd dreamed up the, you know, the, the original characters for, um, for a dread character as it were, and the, and the machinery and so forth. But I didn't know, you know, with the M Mike McMahon thing, and I think he took over umbrage over that. I'm sure he did. Not that I, I was um, party to that or knew much about it. But, uh, I mean, as you say, it was, it was to, the, it was to ba battle's benefit, really, because um, we could suddenly keep this man on board. And I, I gave him almost Mestizo, which was I'm not sure it went down brilliantly with the reader because maybe it was a different type of battle story. 
what wonderful artwork again what a wonderful character you know when you look back on it now uh, I, 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 him and Alan Hebden worked so closely together now Alan Hebden is a case in point as, 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 I mean very creative you know ideas man again like Jerry but mm. Alan was sensible enough to know what Carlos could do so his scene descriptions would be a couple of lines normally you know yeah. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Tank, German Tank approaches, you know, and that's about it. And let Carlos do his own interpretation, whereas uh, Jerry was about would do a two 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 full full scat, full scat pages on the same sort of uh, for the same premise sort of thing, you know, and everyone would be in it. So they work well together because it, Alan would give Eric um, Carlos his head, as it were, you know, he would just let him know what he could do, know what he was good at, and just let uh, let uh, Carlos do the rest. And so that was another dream team, really, which really worked. Mm. I, w I wanted to talk um, just briefly about uh, Darkies Mob. I mean, we've, we've, we've touched on this before. This was John Wagner with, with Mike Weston. I've always been fascinated by Darkies Mob. I, I, um, my great uncle fought in, in uh, the Forgotten Army in Burma during the war. Um, yes. And n now reading battle i uh, so now reading darkies mob it it's uncompromising you know it, it it is there are uh parts of that there are elements in the story which don't make for very comfortable reading uh in this no, day and age no, no. and uh, i i just uh, i wondered about your position as editor about balancing what we've talked about with with the, the kind of the, the being more honest about warfare and actually being careful not to i don't know scare Traumatized yeah, go, go, go one degree over the top, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Always about, again, again, we go back to it. Um, you see, the thing is, um, John was very honest in his, his storytelling. I mean, uh, he, he he got it right again, you know. But Mike was Mike Weston wasn't that type of artist, really. Uh, I mean, Mike's sort of upbringing has been in the fifties and the sixties. Where you know you do the wild wonders, he, he worked on always with a slight humour element to it. You know, wonderful artist, lovely guy again to be with. You know, you just love Mike for visiting the office. He was such a sort of um, pleasant, humorous guy, um, extremely talented. So we were pushing Mike into an area really where he, I don't think he was the right element to it, if you see what I mean by that. He yeah. wasn't. He was never happy with some of the things he was doing. Mm. Uh, not always, because he, he loved John's work. Don't get me wrong, that that would be wrong. He didn't didn't want to do it. But it wasn't really his scene, if you see what I mean. Yeah. And I think he questioned Mark me a few times. Dave, should we be doing it this way? And I said, well, you choose common sense. I, I, I've okayed the script, and I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm prepared to put up with it. Such a marvellous artist that he always got round it somehow, Mike. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it was some of the best work he did personally for the for the company. Uh, I, I, we all we all enjoy. It's not the right word, but it was so dramatic at times that um, you know Mike got Mike really got the I think the um, the acclaim he deserved from previous work, if you don't know, which he didn't get. Um, mm -hmm. And Darky was his, I think was one of his great stories. You know. He did other things for battle, obviously, but he, he really didn't fit comfortably into that extreme grittiness. Carlos would have done, did do, you know. Um, mm. Eric Bradbury was was okay, I think, with it. You know, he could he could work within it, and Joe Coon certainly could. But uh, Mike really wasn't that type of person, if you like. Yeah. And so he was always he was always question marking it you know is this over the top is that too much Dave is that you know what I mean he would ask me and I said I, I could only counter it by saying it's good storytelling uh, Mike um, do, do it the way you think it should be done I mean I will trust your judgment on it you know uh, and we got away with it you know but it was it was near the mark to say the least and but yeah again not to use the word enjoy but I thought it was a very very um, successful and um, powerful story that we had in battle and I was always sorry when it when it came to its conclusion, because like everything else with John, you, you know, you never went past its sell by date. Um, a lot of artists, a lot of script writers would have said, "Okay, Dave, it's a great success as Battle as um, Darkie was in the time in 
in the publication uh, and that would have would, would have prolonged its life it, to such a degree that maybe it lost its power and its um its impact that mm. John would never do that he, he never cheated that way you know he, he he knew where he was going with it he knew what he wanted to do with it and uh, i think it it's it's a, it's a masterpiece really personally you know mm. Mm. Was it was there was there any point where you were given pause? Um, you know, when the skips came in from John, were, were, were there was there any sense of uh, uh, you know not not censorship, but just mm, can we get away with this kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Well, often yeah. I'm sure we might have watered down the odd thing, but it was very rare for me to do that. And truthfully, mm -hmm. it wasn't. You know, because I, I still felt that you know, I mean. I mean, you're reading it now, aren't you? As an adult, um, yeah. And you're, and you're, you, and you still, it, it hits you that way, still, does it? And uh, yeah, yeah, very much, so, very much. So. I mean, you, you, you can recall it as a young, a younger person, obviously. Um, uh, and... I, 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 I didn't, I didn't read it first time around, but um, the uh, the reprints that the Joe Stead magazine did. I mean, with with talking, knocking on for, for sort of fifteen, twenty years ago now. Um, yeah. You know, they're they're. It, it some of it is still uncomfortable reading, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I find that surprising you say uncomfortable, you know what I mean? I can understand you can say, well, I think it was a bit over the top, but mm. yeah, uh, again, see, I suppose really uh, my, my, my only excuse would be uh, maybe I'd never, because I'd never served and because I'd never had to thankfully experience something as awful as what, the mob were going through, as it were, you know, or, mm, or experiencing. Mm. I never really had a, a, a true sort of. Um, all I all I knew was that it was a, a well told, well drawn story, you know, yeah. uh, and yeah. and I I loved it for that sort of fact. And I said, apart from the one exception when an MP uh, wrote to me, uh, one of his constituents, the mother, uh, said uh, had. Um, complain about a certain uh, scene uh, that was the only time we really ever got into trouble on it as it were you know as you mm. can call that trouble mm. and that was soon avoided because I wrote back expressing my viewpoint on it as it were you know and, yeah, um, yeah. so yeah uh, yeah yeah it, it is uncomfortable I, I see I know what you're saying obviously mm. I mean mm. Charlie's War still falls into that very uncomfortable way of life, well, isn't it? You face it. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, this this is kind of where I wanted to to lead it to, where you know you, you you've then got Charlie's War, which is very much an anti-war story, uh, yeah, which is yeah, uncompromising. Yeah. But but Pat's writing is uncompromising in a different way to John's, you yeah, know, because because yeah, there's there's, there's, yeah. there's there's clearly a message behind. I'm not saying there's never any message in in what John writes, but um, no, 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 Pat, no. It's Pat, a it, it, different approach, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, uh, much, I mean, so, very uh, much so. I think that, I think with um, with Pat, the, the, with the sort of story, there are there are layers, aren't there? You know, whereas John maybe is a bit more powerful and gets straight to the to the hub of it, sort of thing. You know, but I mean, Pat wanted to do the Charlie's War story, and I was I was all for it, obviously. And um, uh, but yeah, as you say, very anti-war, really. No, 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 no. There's no disguising that fact, which I thought again was 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 correct uh, as, yeah. a, as a as a as a um, as a, a story within the title, as it were. You know, who should be pro-war? No one really. It's not. You know, let's go out and bash them up and kill everyone in sight. Let's let's think about it sometimes. You know, mm. uh, and and um, Pat was. A genius at that really wasn't he you know and uh, him and joe again another great team you know what, what you know yeah. the words foul me sometimes with those two you know just uh, <laughs> marvelous stuff you know just, just i, could, I yeah. couldn't believe my luck again you know because he wanted to do the war well um the, the world war one story and uh, again on record joe has gone on the same what the hell is it this is never going to work it's you know it's a, a war of attrition it goes nowhere it's and it, they proved between the pair of them that it could work and did work, you know, uh, mm. because it was just um, just two masters of their craft just working together and doing it, you know. And it, it, it was it was of all the stories we ever, ever I ever did, I think um, Charlie's got to be my number one story personally, you know. Mm. I just felt that it um, 
it was 100% right to do that. You know, that's it. It didn't glorify him more. It was real. And, um, and from both sides, that was the important part. You know, we we were as bad as uh, uh, as anyone, as it were, you know, certain characters. Um, mm. So that, that was important again, you know. Good old Pat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you took um, Joel Calhoun, who had been a very popular uh, artist on Johnny Red, which, mm. which, which, which again was a, a, a strip that has a, a fascinating uh, premise in that, you know, Johnny ends up fighting with uh, the Russian uh, Air Force over in the, in the Eastern Campaign. Um, you, you took Joe off of Johnny Red and put him onto Charlie's War. Uh, mm. I mean, that's quite, considering that Johnny Red was, was amongst the most popular strips in battle, that was an incredibly mm. brave thing to do, I guess. Yeah, uh, we just had to get the artist right on this one. I mean, sometimes it doesn't work, does it? Because the artist was wrong and, you know, you think, well, maybe I, maybe he would have been better for it. Um, just knowing Joe as we do. I'd, I'd known Joe back, you know, um, back to the Tiger days again when, you know, he'd drawn the Royal Rover story as a young young uh, aspiring football player. So I knew Joe's work. He He didn't like football, but he could always give you 100 percent you know uh and and he's he, he obviously researched everything he did and um i said when i when i thought of the idea these guys the, the strange thing about is it with people like john cooper mike western eric bradbury even joe jeff campion were always unsure where the next job was coming from mm. yeah i know it sounds crazy that because they were so so talented because they'd come up, I think, through a, you know generations where merely work wasn't that plentiful, and they had to fight for every page they drew, as it were. They 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 were always unsure of their own talents. You know, mm. it, it was us outsiders who saw it more, as it were. You know, what they could do and what they couldn't do. And and like I'd like to think that I knew the business well enough that Joe would be the ideal person for this. He didn't moan about coming off Johnny Red. Um, he did it well. He did it well enough so that it became the number one story at that time in the paper. Uh, and John Cooper certainly didn't worry about taking it over because John, again, a smashing guy, you know, a, a lot of time for, was pleased to take that on. But you know, giving him something like Charlie's War and and um, and really uh, that that type of war story was, was very different, wasn't it? It was extremely different. It was groundbreaking again. And it had to be a guy who knew the subject more. It had to be a guy who could, it was sympathetic with the subject. And it had, to have a, it had to be a guy who was a genius. And Joe certainly was. And Pat and him worked wonderfully together. You know, it had almost sort of an old-fashioned style about it in a way, which suited the First World War in, in its sense. You know, mm-hmm. it, um, it, the drama was all there. But it had, it had a... It, had a, a feeling of the fifties about it still. I felt, you know, and that was Joe because he could do that. You know, he made it made it look authentic for the time, as it were, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, that, I don't no, I don't mean to be um, uh, detrimental to any 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 other artist, and especially the foreign artist, but they could never have got to the level Joe got with that story. And Pat was his was his biggest fan, you know. Mm. <laughs> What do you think, uh, I mean, you, you may not know, I don't know how much you know, contact you, you, you had in terms of the, the readership, but um, what do you think the impact was on the, the readership? You know, they're so used to, to, to um, war stories that were one-sided. We've already kind of talked a, a, a little bit about um, Helmet of Hammer Force, but then, then you get something like Charlie's War, which is so anti-war, particularly... Uh, you know, you, yeah. you're in you're in the 70s. Um, you've been through. You know, any, any kid will probably have some vague memories of of the the anti-Vietnam uh, movement, and you know, C and D yeah. is is, uh, is is coming through. Was was this very much kind of of its time? Did did you get a sense that the the kids who were reading Battle were were picking up on this kind of message? Yeah, maybe. You, you, I think you make a good point there with with the Vietnam because that was so. Um, you know, the, the sort of the media and everything was so anti that war, obviously, and so obviously it's, it's combatants, uh, combatants. But um, 
yeah, uh, I must admit, I, I was surprised by its success initially. Uh, once, once we were on off and running, and and Pat just gave it all this creativity, and Joe was doing a marvelous artwork. Then I knew that you know it would most probably be a number one for uh, forever and ever, as it were. But initially, the, um, the 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 reaction to it, the positive reaction to it, took me by surprise. I must admit, but I was just wanted to do it. You know, I just think, felt that we we had to show another side to war as it were you know and i think by then four or five years into its, its in, into it four years we of up to the uh into its uh lifespan as it were battle it was time battle did something like that you know um but yeah i think you're 100 percent right maybe there was a real sort of uh it wasn't you know it wasn't the biggles and uh, we're all we're all sort of great heroes it was more the reality again and um the, the leadership really sort of went for it and and, and, and again I enjoy is not the right word but uh, uh thoroughly sort of um you know in thoroughly sort of went for the story as it were if you know um, and uh, so that was that was that again that that readership i think was had moved with us if you like you know um mm. uh, from the from pat and john being there at the beginning right through to that time they were read for it as well, if you like, you know, because I said it proved immensely popular with the uh, with the reader. Well, we've kind of already touched on this uh, with the uh, the fallout from action. Uh, I mean, we always use the word banned in inverted commas because it wasn't banned. It was just, you know, uh, the, the, the issue was felt there was concern uh, to do with the violence. As somebody working in uh the office at the time what was the what was the fallout for you in terms of you know what was happening with with, with battle of what happened to to action you know was there suddenly an awful lot of interest in what you were doing or were you just suddenly mindful that you know this 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 was going on around you yeah i think it was more mindful obviously but mm. i i i was never privy to what my, most probably john sanders was going through because mm. senior board members really were sort of um, turning against uh, some of the stuff we were doing, obviously, for, for because of the sort of the flack uh, the company was getting uh, as far as the media and um, you know uh, um, and school teachers and you know the establishment were concerned, as it were. They were they, they were really, it was really being lambasted the uh, the title title, and so John John was a very brave person. I felt he just. He, you know, he, he always won. He was always a bit of a maverick within that that industry. He'd do his things his way and so forth. Um, but uh, again, I think he 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 really was sort of um, bashed because of action. And so we had to we had to we had to be a we had to sort of you know be a part of that sort of if you like watch ourselves and let the gaze suddenly you know because I didn't want battle as I said before suddenly becoming a, a, a watered down version of its original concept from Pat and John really you know I just didn't want that um you know we again we we were wary Pat says some of was maybe too wary and set has gone on record of saying that but you had to be aware that um there was still a young readership and you, you had to be you know uh, mindful of that fact and um John John S really went through the mill as far as the senior management were concerned they you know he um he, he, he fought the calls and he he he, he, he never gave in. But um, yeah, you had to be you had to be aware. Uh, it, it interests me again. You coming back the darky, you know, uh, it still to this day has it has its moments which really make it quite disturbing as such. So yeah, yeah, it, it's something. It's a question mark that maybe we all have to think about, isn't it? Really, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of. Uh, Bring the the talk about battle to a close. I realise we've been talking for quite some time. Um, but you 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 were on the title for four and a half years. Um, yeah. Looking back on that period, um, and this is a a question I ask, you know, creators and and and, and editorial alike. How do you think that that you were changed by your experience on battle? You know, what what, what by the end, what what do you think you had learnt from that time? 
Yeah, but yeah, I, I think it helped me in my development. I, I mean, I I was always mindful much more of the story content. You know, it had to be um, had to be hundred percent. You know, right? There had to be a story. I, I did not like the Biff Bang Wallop type of story where it was action from frame one to frame sixteen, eighteen. Hold on, mm-hmm. where was the plot there? You know, what happened? Nothing happened. It was just a it was just a, an excuse for bloody um, fisticuffs, as it were. You know, I like a story, and yeah, it did. It did change me. It really did, and um, uh, and I think hopefully for the better. You know, um, and it was a it was was really when I recall it now, uh, and the interest that is still shown in the title by people who read it during that time, it, it amazes me really that uh, there is still this interest for it, Michael. You know. Mm. Well, I, I, the, the influence of it is is clear. I mean, not just in terms of the fact, you know, uh, battle action, 2000 AD, etc. But you know, uh, I mean, it's with Garth Ennis, who is somebody, you know, who, who whose entire career <laughs> has been influenced by battle as a comic. You know, he, he, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's he's still doing stuff. You know, we we had the um, uh, the, the spe- we got the special this year. Um, where you know he, he's writing for it and he's really happy to do so because it's been so influential on on him as a person. Yeah, yeah which is great, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I, I know I don't know him. I've not, never met Garth, but I've had occasion to to work with him on things, you know. And um, uh, I did a forward for something he did for Johnny Red and so forth. And um, and he's a, he's again just a, a, a very pleasant man to work with, as it were, you know. But mm. I think he holds battle in great regard. Um, it, it certainly helped him in his writing career, um, and, and it's that's very pleasing for someone like me who's now quite sort of uh, elderly and <laughs> yeah, pump well past his prime, as it were. But I, I, you know, it, it's nice that luminaries such as Garth really got their inspiration from a title such as Battle. Mm. I, I want to talk uh, just a, a little bit about football. Because um, after Battle, you moved on to um, Top Scorer. Have you gone again? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Hello, mate. There Sorry about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's fine. I'm, I'm used to uh, being messed around by Zoom or Skype or whichever. Uh, I can't, I'm, I can't uh, understand uh, the fact that you, you give me a meeting number. Yeah. And every time I, I've input it three times now, it doesn't it doesn't accept it as it were. And I, I don't understand that at all, you know. So that there we go. We're, we're 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 in contact again. So don't worry. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about football because um, you you'd worked on uh, Scorcher uh, back in the the, the late sixties and seventies, and um, but then uh, after Battle, you worked on Top Soccer with uh, yeah. as part of Barry Tomlinson's group. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm always fascinated by football comics because they were never something I I read when I was a kid. I was never into football. I, you know, I was pure comics. It, it, it's it's a, a an area where they were fantastically popular in their time. You know, we've had Barry Tomlinson yeah. on the on the podcast before, and he's, he's talked extensively about that. Um, what was the secret of a of a good of a good football comic? Uh, I think again. I think it's um, identifying the, the, the hero, as it were. I think most kids would say they all want to be uh, as good as their hero is on the football pitch, you know. And uh, the, the football comics almost gave them that that sort of link into that world, uh, as such, or their their dreams and aspirations, as it were. I mean, the fact that I mean, it's one of my little beefs in life that really, um, I, you know, battle was going quite well. Uh, we had no problems with it, and um, and then there came this massive restructuring within the group. And at that time, as I recall, uh, Barry was developing a, a dummy for, for a new football comic, you know, called Top Sucker. Um, and um, uh, they took Top Sucker away from Barry and gave it to David Gregory in a shoot football arena, as it were, and mm-hmm. with Shoot Magazine still. Still, um, still being so successful as, uh, in, during that sort of middle. When was it, when we talking about late seventies now, aren't we? It's late seventies era, as it were. Um, and then they decided that with my football, if you like, um, uh, you know, um, uh, football sort of 
uh, not ability, what's the word? I'm, I'm searching my interest in football, sorry. Um, that, that I would be the ideal guy to work with David Gregory on, on Barry's title, on Barry's top soccer title. Now, Barry's yeah. top soccer title hadn't been developed at all. It was just in the sort of um, dummy stage, if you like, you know. Um, so, but the, the, the sort of, if you like, um, the character for Barry to accept what he they'd done to him was to, I think, up, up him in the sort of, uh, if you like, the um, in, in the power structure of ranks, you know, and that sort of thing. And also give him give him battle. Now, when I when I recall when I think back now, I think I wished I'd stayed on battle uh, <laughs> because battle was successful. It was doing well. We had further ideas for it and so forth. But again, such is my interest in football, and I like I like Barry and I like Dave Gregory. So I, again, I was trying to keep away from the the, the politics of it all. Um, I thought, well, okay, let's give Top Soccer maybe it's time for a change for me, as it were, you know. Um, but then, in in, in retrospect, uh, Top Soccer was quite a good publication. I felt naturally, and um, we and we did a good job on it. And um, shoot, um, I think copied a lot of our sort of design led idea. It didn't last very long. But the reason it didn't last very long was that Top Soccer was launched at the time. This is the this is the sort of the machinations that go on in the background sometimes to to to. Um, Offset something that Odoms was doing. They were do, they were going to produce a new football magazine, mm. so flooding the market with Top Soccer as well would protect shoot in the end. If you see what I mean, mm. uh, if that makes sense, Michael, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Top Soccer was really seen as a sort of um, okay, if it does well, fine, but we're not really that worried because all it do is flood the market and shoot will still, will still survive. As it, as a fact, the other football title from Odoms didn't survive. I think it was called Goal at the time, and um, and and Top Soccer certainly didn't survive. And I was told this story by Dave Gregory himself. He apologised to me later. You know, he said sorry about this, David. Nothing to do with the publication, but I think it was more sort of stuff that happened in the background, as it were. You know, these mm. publishing houses. It's the sort of things they they did then or do now or whatever. You know, so I'd lost battle. Uh, and really, I mean. That didn't best please me at the time, really, obviously, because I felt, well, hold on, through no fault of my own, you know, and I had a good little team around me on Top Soccer and who, who, who worked their bloody socks off to get that thing right, you know. And, mm. we, and so it was a little bit sort of galling at the time, you know. I, I was suddenly into this political arena, which I'd, I'd done my utmost to keep out of. Yeah. Because I didn't want to get involved in it, you know. And um, so it, it was all a bit sort of worrying at the time. Football... Will will always be there. There, I mean, it's, it's gone into so many directions now, isn't it? But uh, uh, you know, and Barry did his best with Roy all the all the way along. I mean, and so forth. And he was he's still his, this revered comic book character to this day, isn't he? But you know, it's um, it's a moment in time when you think, well, oh, it shouldn't have gone like that. Really, it's it was through no fault of the guys that were involved in it. If you see what I mean, it was it was much more senior than that. Mm, mm. Mm, just throw that up. <laughs> no, 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 it, said, it, like. no. It's fascinating. It's fascinating because it, 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 it's <coughs> that um, by the the sort of uh, beginning of the eighties, middle of the eighties. You know, the 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 model that had been brought in under people like John Sanders was beginning to run out of steam. You know, things were getting folded yeah. into uh, titles which themselves were then collapsing because there yeah. seemed to be this general decline in in the audience that yeah, was yeah, there I, I i i guess as, as somebody you know who, who's getting reports on what your circulation is on on titles you you must have been aware of that that you were chasing fewer readers oh yeah yeah all the time i mean i just say it goes back that goes back to the 60s even uh you know it was always <clears throat> A battle of the circulations, as it were. You know, the only uh, the circulation was so so important. Of course, you know, it's the viability, obviously. Um, but it was getting worse in the eighties, as you say. Um, I mean, two thousand bucked the trend because again, I think the, the one one the content was superb. So don't get me wrong, marvelous. You know, um, uh, I know that, and it was it was always um, uh, so well done, and uh, and with so many creative uh, guys on it. But by the same token, I think that readership developed with the title again. Mm. 
you you remained with 2000 AD because it was was always groundbreaking. We 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 tried New Eagle in a, in a different way, um, uh, and it, it ran very well for about two three years. Good circulation, slowly surely, uh, you know it uh, it went the way most titles go. They, you know, they stagger on for a little while, but they're always either eating up other titles, you know, to keep them viable. Um, uh, or it's it, it, it's a it's a struggle. I mean, Barry Gilpage, um, uh, um, people like that would have much more knowledge of that side of it than myself. You know, I mean, I was just mm. instrumental in, in my own titles I worked on, but them being sort of group managing editors, as it were, would under, would have understood it much better than myself. Um, and they, I'm sure they were getting um, stick from senior manager all the time regarding falling circulations. So it was a difficult time, yeah, it was, you know, and mm. and by which stage also, I mean, I I, I, I hate to say this about things, but we, you may be running, you're running out of impetus yourself, of steam yourself, you know, and you're losing you know, sight of the core values again. Um, mm. And Battle had those core values, which again, uh, pleases me as a, as a recollection, as it were, of course, you know. Mm. Well, let, let's talk about Eagle because, um... Uh, as we touched on, uh, John Sanders uh, sort of wielded the axe uh, back in the the the, the, um, the seventies on uh, on the old Eagle. Mm, mm. What what was the logic about bringing Eagle back in the nineteen eighties, or, or at least reviving the name? I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Barry himself, um, uh, he would tell you. I'm sure he may, may have told you this already. You've, you've spoken to him in the past. Um, uh, was a, was an avid fan of the Eagle cut, uh, publication, the, the the original, and he, he felt that we should be able to try and do some of that in the eighties, which was which was great as far as I'm concerned. And he asked me if I'd be the editor of it, him and Gil Page, and um, well, I was delighted to do so. Really, I mean, uh, we 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 we, um, we took this title on. I mean, it was always a, if you like, a millstone around our necks in in some ways, but it, it had so much sort of attendant. Um, PR with it, attached to it as well. Mm. <laughs> that you know, if you if you produce something halfway good, it would be okay, sort of thing. Because the Eagle title itself is just a an iconic title, isn't it? Obviously. Um, so I mean, I was I was delighted to do that. Uh, we we made we made the decision initially to to do a lot of photo strip content within the title to make it as different as we possibly could. You know, from from other titles that were already in the in 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 the in the, uh, in the publishing house we worked for, like um, Eagle and um, like Battle and uh, and Two Thousand. So we, we did a lot of photo stories, which initially were were very very good. I still had good writers writing for me. In John, Pat Mill did the Dandier story. Um, Alan Hebden. Well, I, I kept my team, if you like. Of good writers, Jerry Finley Day, are all doing good stuff for us before me, mm. um, and so you know, yeah, had every chance. And I said, first couple of years, we we did very, very well, very, very uh, encouraging. We thought, well, okay, we've we've got something here, but then slowly, surely, you know, the the, the, the downward <laughs> slope sort of uh, took over, and um, mm. uh, you know, all of a sudden, you're you're changing sort of direction on its printing process. All of a sudden, you're changing stories because you can't afford to do the photo stories the same way because they were very sort of uh, expensive to do. Um, so it's a con it was a continuing battle, you know, with one, the falling circulation, and two, the expensive. You're losing staff. I mean, that sort of thing. You know, guys, you really sort of uh, um, had a great a lot of time for and respect for. Um, and so the industry, again, was starting to to suffer you know really was as far as i was concerned as well you know i mean uh, I, i'd enjoyed those heady days on battle and sculpture and 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 new eagle to a certain extent at the beginning but it was going the wrong way as far as i was concerned dan dare is one of those uh properties that has so much baggage with it yeah um you know a, 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 it had been bought in to, 2000, uh, to the beginning of 2000 AD, and they they'd attempted to, to to revamp it. I, I guess when you're when you're looking to revive a title like Eagle, ultimately Eagle is Dan Dare, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. 
yeah. What, what was yeah, your... I mean, uh, go on. Well, I mean, uh, uh, with Dandere, right, okay, right away. You, right away you've got this this marvellous character, haven't you? You know, which broke all ground as it was in the 50s, early 60s, whatever. Um, but, you know, we we didn't... The company didn't hold the rights for the Dandere character. That mm. had been that had been sold off at some stage... Um, to a company called the De Savary, the De Savary Group. Yeah. And I recall Barry and myself going to a a, a, a crunch meeting with with the head of um uh, of the De Savary Group, um, Paul De Savary, I suppose it was, uh, a long while ago. But um, and him saying no, he, he didn't want the original Dan Dare to be portrayed to be portrayed in the new comic, as it were. You know. So we dreamed up the rather contrived great 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 whatever grandson of the original character as it were mm-hmm. which never fitted properly it really, it really didn't i mean it was uh it was well done by pat and then dealt well originally by jerry embleton i think the artist was initially on it and then by ian the marvelous ian kennedy uh mm-hmm. again uh, another great artist um, you know, and we we did some good stuff on it, but we were always fighting against the original character. You know, it had to be the original Dan Dare, uh, yeah. and there we were bringing in a, you know, this um, five times removed. Who do you think you are? Type character, you know, um, uh, and it, so it was always a bit of a contrived, I think, um, situation with the character, and one that I didn't enjoy at the time because of uh, we couldn't do what we wanted to do with the character. Mm. But that said, I think a little while later, uh, they all changed around and we could then bring the original um, character back, which I did, which we did with Keith Watson as the artist, who was yeah. one of the original artists on, on the Dan Dare in the 50s, as it were, you know. Mm. And um, so we got, we got him back eventually, but it was, it, was, it was well down the track by the time we got him back. And so I think we lost certain part of the magic associated with Dan at that stage. Yeah. Well, one thing I've, I really did want to talk to you about is the, the photo strips and specifically Doom Lord. Now, um, photo strips, uh, anybody who'd, who'd read girls' comics uh, in the 70s and 80s would, would have, would have uh, encountered photo strips. But in, in, boys, pic, uh, in boys' papers, it, it, yeah. it, it was quite unusual. Um, what, what was the logic about doing Doom Lord as a, as a photo strip? Well, there, were, there wasn't only Doom Lord. There were three or four photo strip stories within the title, as I, yeah. I think you must remember. But uh, Doom, Lord, Doom, Lord, Doom Lord was the um, was the uh, number one character. Uh, it, it was just in a bid to be different, really, Michael. Truthfully, you know, we yeah. we, bought, we brought Eagle back, um, or Barry brought it back. Really, I mean, he was the instigator of it um, to be different, to be groundbreaking, to be. You know the new the new eagle of the aces, as it were, uh, and, and we decided, much to the um, consternation of many an artist, uh, the cartoonist club amongst them, you know, to do to some of the stories in photo strip because they were proving so popular in the girls area. And initially, I think we got it not too bad. You know, I think we did some good 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 um, good strips, as it were, good stories we were written by Alan Grant and John Wagner and. Um, Tom Tully and Jerry, so we we had the, we had the writers on board, you know, but you can never maintain the the excellence with photo strip. It was it's always about it's quite a painstaking process, you know. You get all the photographs to be printed, to be laid out on per page, as it were, and initially, really, it was quite expensive as well, you know, um, and so it became across the bear as it were you know we kept with it as, for as long as we could um, and then suddenly you get you get someone like um, um, what's his name sorry um, uh, Eric Bradbury uh, drawing it when we changed yeah. when we changed the the, the the idea as it were suddenly you, you can see you can see the mileage in the character again because <laughs> Gary can do things which we could never do with photo strip of course you know mm. uh, just just you had to pay our, our artists. You had to pay, you know, the um, uh, artist agents. You had to pay um, the, the guys who played the parts. I mean, we were we were even sort of getting. I mean, there were security guards getting getting bumped off in the story, like IPC security guards. Part of the story. We, we were. 
anyone who could sort of look at a camera and sort of act a part to be bumped off, we 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 were using them. You know, I think I was part of the, I was one member of the Supreme Council at one time who was judging Doom Lord himself. I, I was in robed up and played that role. You know, I mean, yeah. that that's the way photo strip worked. Really, it was all a bit sort of a hand to mouth, and we can do this. But we had the, we had the writers on board. You know, we had we had still had good writers and. Uh, but I think the actual process really was uh, always letting us down, really, because we couldn't tell the story as it should be told, you know. Um, mm -hmm. um, and you know, forget we were forgetting about them, the the artistry and the imagination from the artist that can can portray something so well, really, you know. But it was a good try. We we gave yeah. it a good <laughs> shot. <laughs> um, with with uh, the, the the new eagle, and I I remember very fondly the the issues that I was able to get as a kid. There was somebody who was getting into to 2000 AD. Um, looking back on it now, do you think the time was right for that project? Do you think you know uh, that that the, there was a chance that it could have developed legs and and continued uh, maybe beyond maybe the, the time a, it did? Two or three years earlier, maybe might have done it good. Because battle was very successful. Action had proved successful, really, and um, I mean, I, I don't think Eagle would ever have gone down the sort of um, uh, the extremities of violence, maybe battle and um, you know, and action, and even 2018 because that uh, went to that extent. But it, I think in in the 70s, you know, mid 70s, the comics were were very stable and, and doing very well, and and kids were very, still very excited by them, and it was their their weekly read. Maybe we were, we were two or three years too late. But other than that, it was a, it was a good time to try it. Maybe I don't know. You know, it was a it was a, it was a valiant attempt, as I say. You know, and um, uh, uh, we we got it right to begin with. I felt, but it, it always was always a bit of a tribulation that we couldn't keep the standard up, as it were, which always concerned me. You know, mm. on the visual. Yeah, look. There, there, there were so many elements that that were kind of tried and tested from previous you know from, from from previous experience so you get something like computer warrior which again was a, a strip that i have an awful lot of affection for and you know you, you look at the, the the stuff that was in uh action and and, and comic books like that where it's it's riffing off um kids other interests you know the, the, so then with, with with things like hook joy it was um hooking if you forgive the pun into uh the interest in Jaws and things like that. With Computer mm. Worry, you know, mm. it, it, that, that, that's a standard trick, a standard thing that you, you do in comics. And it, it, it's such a shame that, as you say, it probably came a little bit too late. So those... Too, those too late, yeah. ...don't really work. I mean, I, I, I sort of thought the Computer uh, Warrior, because obviously kids were playing their computer games, weren't they? You know, and I remember sort of having a lunch with John and sort of giving him the idea, as it were, and immediately John went, no, it's not my sort of story. You know, it's it's not me. But again, it needed someone like John and, and, and Alan Grant, I think he was working with at the time, to, mm. to make it work. You know, I, I, and it did work. I mean, we we, we would um, we would take a real life Eagle reader. He would feature in the story. Um, you know, and um, John and Pat's uh, John and Alan's imagination would uh, would see that story through, and it was well drawn, as I recall. You know. Um, so yeah, that, that it worked, but it wasn't really a, 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 a typical type of story that John would have dreamed up in the first instance, if you know what I mean. Mm. Uh, it, it was a bit too contrived again, but I mean, it, it was very successful, really. I mean, because the reader, the reader participate, participation bit was was very very important to it, really. You know, and uh, mm. kids are like nothing better than seeing the themselves featured in a, in a publication and um, we got a lot of um, we got a lot of um, post and uh, goodwill from that story from the reader mm. but so uh, yeah we, we comics as I recall going back to even school today was you know we're doing one a new football story now what's popular on TV what's popular at the films at the moment what's popular in other titles what you know what DC Tim Thompson's doing What's another title doing, which is popular, and you and you sort of um, put them all into the melting pot, and out comes something that, like, um, if you like, Hookjaw, you know, which um, you know was based very largely on the Jaws success, of Spielberg's Jaws success, wasn't it? You know, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, if that's what the reader wants to see at that time, and 
and hook job was immensely uh, popular, then um, yeah, fine. I mean, uh, uh, Pat, Pat sort of put the thrill level right up to that one, the violence level, didn't he? He, <laughs> he went through the, he went through the sound barrier on that one, you know. But um, yeah, yeah. I suppose that that's really. I suppose uh, I suppose that's the way the media has always we've always sort of if you like develop titles it's what's popular at the time isn't mm, it really mm. and uh and they can be spin-offs as you say right quite rightly you know i i i want to, to uh, rush out because I, I realize we've been speaking for a, an awful long time I, I, I do appreciate how much um time you've, you've you've given me but i i want to just uh move on to roy the rovers because right. Um, this is a character that we we've uh, revived recently. Um, you know, trying to put him back in in uh, his, his very rightful place as the sports comic book character um, in the in in the UK. Um, by the late eighties, you, you you'd moved on uh, from the Eagle, and, and Barry Tomlinson um, was uh, uh, working to uh, uh, produce a new look, Roy the Rovers. Now. Um, you're, uh, I believe you're responsible for Roy's, the original Roy's kind of sticky end, as it were, uh, in um, the 1990s. I, well, it was, it was a cliffhanger to all, end all cliffhangers, really. I mean, <laughs> what I want, I mean, my, my, my thought with Roy, I mean, I, I was brought back in house because I, I was working for Barry uh, under the CES, CES banner. Uh, mm. We'd taken Eagle away from, from the publishing world We'd taken um, Tiger, Roy, and so forth. Uh, Barry, was pr- we were producing them, uh, them as freelance contributors uh, from from home, as it were. Do you know that mm. story? Have you are you aware of that at all? Uh, I, 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 I'm I'm aware of it, but um, I, I'm sure our listeners would uh, would love to hear it from you. Well, um, you know, we we John S again, John Sanders again. Um, calls, I mean, Barry knew about it, obviously, because he uh, obviously he was setting it up. But we were ed- editors were called into John S's and saying the the, the future of the uh, title meant that they would be better off produced uh, as freelance um, publications away from the office, you know, mm. negating all the expense of uh, you know working from from a, a London base as it were. Um, um, didn't didn't phase me at all. I thought great fun, you know. And we, I could sort of uh, do my work, which I was always very really sort of uh, professional in doing. I mean, I'd, I'd get up and do my sort of uh, my stint, and then have some time for my own sort of uh, pleasures as well, rather than commuting backwards and forwards to London. You know. Anyway, that that was the premise of it. Um, but I took away um, uh, Eagle, Barry took away Roy and Tiger, I think. And mm. Battle was being done by Terry. I can't remember. I can't remember the, um, the exact sort of um, breakdown of it all. But anyway, I, I was doing Eagle, and all of a sudden, I was I'd been working at home for about eighteen months, two years when. Gil Page um, came to my home address and said that they wanted to sort of um, re relaunch Roy, which meant taking it away from Barry, really, which was all very, very, um, you know, delicate at the time, as you can well imagine, you know, but they wanted to make it much more feature orientated, update it, you know. Uh, and uh, Roy, great character as he was, um, you know, great opportunity. Let, let, let's try it. Let's do it. I mean, I apologised to Barry, who at the time was fine with it. I mean, he, nothing he could do about it. They were going to take it away anyway, but whether I was going to be editor or not, really, in that sense, you know. Mm. And so we did. We 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 um, we, we relaunched the boy, um, and it was again quite popular for a time. Slowly circulating figures um, fade, and four or five years after I'd I'd relaunched it, it, it comes to its. Uh, it's demised, and they'll bring it out as a monthly publication. So I left it with a proverbial cliffhanger that um, because Roy was now about 65 years of age in sort of real terms, um, and Barry had really developed the character on a real, real realistic time factor. You know, he had son, he had twins, and he'd married, and he was he was operating with stars, you know, they were... Spando Bally stars in the background every now and then. There was mm. Eric Malcolm, and it was a real life publication. And time had moved on, and the son was getting older and older. I think Rocky himself, the young son, um, his, his, um, his son was about 18, 19, 20 years of age, and there was Roy still, you know, banging in hat tricks for um, 
most of the rovers every week sort of thing. So I, I thought perhaps it might be a good idea just to sort of leave it in, in the cliffhanger uh, that, you know, he, he sustained a bad injury. And it, quite, it was quite sort of... Um, a uh, storyline we dreamed up, that, you know, with the helicopter crash and so forth. But you know, the famous left foot was was damaged. But I didn't put the final, you know, uh, sentence for it until I had a final full stop on it. I, I left it open, and when it came back, it was then given to another uh, someone else who, who took it up gleefully and made made Roy a dis, this dishevelled sort of wreck. Right, you know, Rocky took over the sun and everything. So that wasn't my <laughs> that wasn't my sort of interpretation of it. I just thought it was a good it was a good ending. You know, still the great hero. Maybe the maybe the future is the new Roy. But I didn't mm. I didn't I didn't see where that was going, and I wouldn't have changed that. I think had I got been the chance to go come back with him, which I wasn't given the chance, I would have made Roy whole again, if you like. Um, he'd, he'd recovered. He would have recovered. But that was the cliffhanger we gave him, as it were, and um, and so therefore, Barry always makes the point. You know, we're we're, we're losing a great so iconic character. Why do you? Why was that done? But it wasn't me. I might have dreamed up the the concept, but I didn't. I didn't do the final full point on it. If you know what I mean, that his career <laughs> was over. <laughs> so that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's great, great character again. It's nice to see him back. You know, I mean, it's all it's all a bit different now. Rebellion's version of him uh, is very much different to the original Roy, of course, and it has to it has to move on, doesn't it? But mm. you know, I mean, um, Roy uh, Barry would say, and we'd all say, Dan Dare, marvelous character. And they they entertained they entertained kids for years and years and years and years. So the great great uh, uh, great credit to the, the original, the you know, the great writers of the past. Kept mm. these characters alive for these kids, you know, uh, who, who enjoyed them through the generations. As, as somebody involved in editorial, uh, you know, working with creators to bring these characters to life and you know new publications, um, what's your feeling now on on? This is going to sound odd. Bear with me on your role in the process, because um, so often. Um, there's a, a, a temptation to portray creators and editorial as being at loggerheads over stuff and editorial stopping creators what they want to do. Um, but it seems with, with the, the vast majority of your, of your career, it's been about being hand in hand with the creators and, and sort of helping them achieve their potential. So I, you know, I, I wanted to get your views on, on, on uh, what it's, what it's been like being that side of the desk, as it were. Yeah, um, I think I, I, I've always been in awe of the creator personally. You know, the mm. I mean, because I can't draw a straight line. You know, it's um, <laughs> those guys who can bring magic to a page of artwork. To me, is something incomprehensible. Really, I just don't understand how they do it. You know what I mean? It's it's wonderful, and how they how they see see through a scene description and can pick out the points that. Are, are relevant and make it work and so forth, you know. So I've always had this great admiration and awe for the creator, really, within the process. My, if I've got uh, if I've got a, um, a regret, is that I don't think we ever realise um, just how much we were we were putting onto these guys. You know, we wanted four pages a week from them, um, regular and must be on time. Um, we, we were we were hard taskmasters, really, and uh, it's got to be the best it can be. We unfortunately, um, I think Pat and John would love to have had the idea going back to Pass again that we could build build up some stock. There's always another story in the cupboard ready to go in. You know what I mean by that? You've got mm. 30 pages from a certain artist who's already ahead of his time, and he uh, on on a time scale, and he's got it all done, and he hasn't put him under great strain. But that's not the way the company worked. They never wanted. A, a sort of a, a cash flow situation where you had, you know, pages and pages of uh, artwork sitting in drawers ready to go out, and you'd already paid these contributors. They wanted, a, a, you know, a, a cash in the, in the hand type situation. That you pay it one week, it's printed the next, as it were. Um, so we never had that sort of um, that luxury, I'm afraid, that we could sort of stockpile, and therefore we really did, uh, you know. 
these poor creators really went through the mill for what we were expecting from them. Uh, and the better a, cont a contributor was, the more you wanted from him, obviously. So again, going back to Carlos, you you wanted to stay on battle. Going back to Mike Weston, you wanted him to stay on on battle and work more on battle. And there was another editor wanting the same thing from these guys, obviously. And so we, we it wasn't very, I couldn't have been very pleasant for them, you know. And when I when I when I see I see things now, um, I mean, someone just um, did some diaries that Mike Weston. He used to uh, he used to sort of uh, produce a diary, you know, his own personal diary, and mm -hmm. some of the some of the some of these um, some of his verbiage uh, makes interesting reading because suddenly there you are as the as the hard task Dave Dave phoned again, must be in by tomorrow or we miss an issue, you know that type of thing. Is Christ, was that was I that sort of uh, you know was I that sort of strong and um, bullish on these guys, you know that type of thing, you know, mm -hmm. so. In that respect, well, I think we were too heavy on them at times, but that was just the way it worked, I'm afraid. But uh, I, I love their creativity, and uh, I love to love putting good teams together, good double X together, you know. And um, mm. in the main, I, I think I succeeded on that. We had some good te good double X, you know, uh, in my time, and uh, guys who had great respect for one another. They, they worked on the same story, and they had great respect for one another. And that's 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 something. One can look back with some pride as well, you know. If if uh, somebody uh, had the opportunity to go into editorial or, or decided they want to go into editorial, what, is there a Dave Hunt golden rule that you've that you've picked up from the from your <laughs> career? Um, yeah, I think always be honest if you can be. You know, and it's, I mean, obviously you have to be diplomatic at times and maybe and be honest with yourself. Enjoy it, really. I mean. Yeah, when I look back now and, and realise we were really sort of um, we were entertaining, you know, some lads like Garth Ennis, as you say, um, you know, and, and they only developed because of what we were what we were doing at the time. Then it's then it's really marvellous, isn't it? It's we're quite reassuring. So be honest with yourself, but most of all, enjoy what you're doing, really, as well. And we did in the main. I mean, John Sanders was a great champion for of editors when he came on board. Uh, editors moved up the um, uh, up, up the ladder a little bit, you know, because before I, before that, editors were well, they were okay, you know, but they're only editors. It's a, it's a board member, but John made us made us stronger people, as it were, and more I think more creative. Bringing in John and Pat gave them the opportunity to, to develop their their way of things, you know, and that was that that so that's the, my my only my only sort of thing would say. Be honest and, and mostly enjoy it. What you're doing, as it were, you know. And uh, and if you believe in something, stay with it. Brilliant, uh, Dave. Thank you so much for, for all. <laughs> I'm this. sorry if it's a bit garbled, you know, but uh, not at all. Yeah, not at few, all. It's been fascinating. So 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 before it's all very uh, long time ago, isn't it? But uh, yeah. it's interesting. Comics is it's marvellous, really. I mean. You, one goes to sleep at night and you think, crikey, we were we that, we're that sort of influential on these people, you know, these these, these youngsters. And we were, weren't we? And, and, yeah. You know, not me, but uh, the, the team that put these comics together was, you know. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much to Dave for that. We had some almost insurmountable technical issues during the course of that, so I hope the edits come out okay. Um, we're going to be back in a week's time uh, for more from the 2080 Thrillcast lockdown tapes. As always, please make sure you are taking care of yourselves and of others, and until next time, Splendid Verthwick. Alert! 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 Fill power levels dangerously high. Alert! Alert! Read 2000 AD every week. Ask your comic book store or newsagent now. Subscribe to the galaxy's greatest comic at 2000adonline.com.